Welcome to my channel. My name is Alyssa Ritter and I am a costume designer for theater and digital media. In this video, I'm going to demystify Clo 3 dds digital interface by relating it to the physical space in a traditional theatrical costume shop. This is not going to be a comprehensive list of tools and it's also not an explanation on how to use them. Uh, if you want to know more about the different tools of Clo 3 d check out the other videos in my channel. This video is an introduction to the 3D workspace, the tools available, and where to find them. Also, check out my Patreon in the description for a written guide for this tutorial, as well as uh, project ideas and one-on-one -on -one support for advancing your skills. And with that, let's get started. The first thing that I want to say is just be kind to yourself. It's always confusing when you walk into a new shop and you're learning where they keep all the tools and how things work, and this is no different. But soon you will be able to pick up on some of the, these techniques and you will wonder how you ever used paper patterns again, trust me. All right, the first thing that I wanna show you is just the file <laughs> the file menu. So that's right up here and the equivalent to the file menu in a costume shop is probably the office space. So this is where you will go if you want to set up a new project, uh, if you want to import a custom avatar like I have here. So more admin administrative tasks. It's also where you can export a uh, a PDF and um, then the general guides for uh, typical computer commands like undo, redo. I wouldn't use this <laughs> toolbar to do all of these tasks, but it is a handy reminder of what the key commands are or the hotkeys are to do all of these things like delete, copy, paste, etc. The next few options in the file menu are actually just all the tools that exist elsewhere in the 3D interface. So uh, this isn't the handiest place to find these, but if you really can't find a tool, you can just search through these menus and you'll be able to find it. There's a few specialty things here as well, and then settings, which I wanna go ahead and take the time to go ahead and look at user settings. And just make sure that your view controls you have set to re regular mouse and your user interface you have set the unit system to whatever unit system you prefer whether that be inch centimeter or millimeter all right the next thing that i want to show you is the library and this is kind of like your stock or your storage area this is where you can find different garments that if you want to add to your scene some of them maybe you have made at an earlier time it's also where you're going to find your avatars which in our case are the dress forms that we're going to be using you can also adjust the size for your avatar here if i go ahead and double click avatar I can, um, it'll open up, uh, you know, male, female, kid, uh, here's avatar selection, and then all of your options here. And you, every time you start a project, this is going to be the first place that you go to. All right, the next thing that I want to show you is the 3D window, and that is this window right here. And this is where the magic happens. Think of this like your fitting room, where you can see what's happening as you're patterning in live time in 3D space. To navigate the 3D window, this is probably going to be the trickiest learning curve for you if you're new to 3D software. What you'll want to do is if you have the regular mouse settings, which I just showed you how to do, if you hold down the middle mouse button, which for me is a scroll wheel, then I can pan around the 3D space. If I hold down the right mouse button, then I can rotate around the 3D space. And then to zoom, it's the scroll wheel. So there's the scroll wheel for zoom, hand is middle mouse with just clicking the scroll wheel, and then the holding down the right mouse and uh, dragging is how you rotate. So take some time to get used to that because that's going to be, like I said, one of the biggest learning curves. The next thing that I want to draw your attention to is the 3D toolbar. And so all of the tools right here are the types of things that you're going to be using in the 3D space. So think of what you would want to use in a fitting room. So we have measuring tapes, we have uh, safety pins right here for pinning things both 
you can actually pin to the avatar, which is fun. You can't do that in real life. And then, you know, sometimes we do have to sew people into their costumes. Uh, and so you can also sew in the 3D space as well. And uh, yeah, one last thing in the 3D window is the 3D display options. And here you can do things like you can make your fabric translucent so you can see what's going on underneath. Or you can show the mesh for your, your avatar. Don't do that. But um, Or you can hide and show different details uh, in your garments here. So th that is your options in the 3D display space. This is also where you can show fit maps. So you can check the fit of the, of the garment. So right now it's showing me that there's something going on here that's making this tight and difficult for the avatar to wear. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the 2D window, which is this window right here. Think of this space like your patterning table, but also your sewing table and pretty much your assembly table. The cool thing about the 2D window is you can imagine while you're patterning, the whole table is covered with fabric and you are drafting directly onto that fabric. And as you're drafting, you're also cutting. And then you can also sew here too. So you have to think about tools a little bit differently, but essentially all of the pattern drafting is happening in the 2D window. And just like the 3D window, all the tools that you need for the 2D window are right here. And you have to kind of think of it like in the workspace, we are using rulers and pencils simultaneously, but in with Clothe 3D, you actually just have one tool that does both. And I'll go ahead and show that really quick. That's this polygon tool here. And as I am clicking and dragging, I'm both drawing lines and I'm measuring them at the same time. You can see those numbers going up. And I'm also squaring my lines too. That is what those pink guides are telling me. And you can see as I drew that rectangle in the 2D pattern window, it just appeared in the 3D window. So these two windows work hand in hand at the same time. And one last thing, just like in the 3D window, we have the 2D display options, which are right here. And uh, this is the same type of thing where you can show and hide your work. I like to work with my pattern pieces translucent so that I can see kind of like Swedish tracing paper. All right, we just have two more windows to talk about. And the first one is the object browser. And this, uh, this window is telling you everything that is in your scene. So in this project, I've been working with two different types of fabric. I've been working with a chiffon and I've been working with a canvas. And those are both displayed here. If I had buttons, which I don't, they would be displayed here. Same with, with buttonholes, top stitching, and the like. And that's important because the next window I'm going to show you is the property editor, which is right here. And anytime you click on something in the object browser, so if I click on the canvas, it's going to show me all of the properties for that canvas. And this is amazing because Basically, you can make the whole dress out of one fabric, change your mind, and make it out of something completely different. Also, anything that you click in the 2D window will have properties that you can edit in the property editor, as well as the 3D window. So right now, if I click on this square, it's showing me the properties of that square. So it's showing me the grain direction, it's showing me which fabric it has, it's showing me a bunch of more uh, details that are helpful and we'll look more into later. It's uh, also where you can turn on, on and off elastic, seam taping, and things like that. Same in the 3D window. If I click on my avatar, it's showing me the options for the avatar. So the other way that you'll know what need to know that you can adjust things is by right clicking. So if I right click the avatar, it gives me options there. If I right click any pattern, if I right click any line in any pattern, it shows me options. So those are different ways that you can also adjust the properties in each aspect of your project. All right, well, that was a really quick overview, but I hope that it's given you some confidence to move forward. The interface can be really daunting at first, but trust me, it gets so much easier and you'll be so glad that you've added this new tool called Clo 3D to your theatrical toolkit. And again, if you want to learn more about Clo 3D, follow my channel and sign up for my Patreon.